Magandang umaga po, mga kapatid. <clears throat> My brother didn't know uh, when he chose that hymn. The opening line says, I hear the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Well, I hear that very loud and clear this morning. Uh, as you can probably tell by my voice, <clears throat> I'm not 100%, but I'm grateful to be here. And uh, yeah, if we could get some water, that'd be great. And uh, oh, just here, sorry. Thank you. Please do turn in your Bibles to uh, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27 to 30. The verses that were just read for us are great reminders of our duty as Christian believers. And so as we come to the preaching of God's word, let's come before the Lord in prayer. Great God and Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you choose to use weak people. Thank you that you continue to remind us day by day in our Christian lives of our duty, which is not performed in our own strength, but is totally dependent upon the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Lord, we thank you that we have a Savior who has paid it all, and all to him we owe. Our sin had left a crimson stain, but you washed it white as snow. Father, thank you that we can come here as believers in Christ this morning, thanking you for what you have done for us and lord we pray that therefore we would give our lives to you in jesus name amen <clears throat> so uh bata is uh, statistics na uh, malamang approximately 80% ng mga nakakar- uh, nakaraon ng New Year's resolution ay uh, all already failed uh, ng pa- sa-, sa pagdating ng buwan ng February. Uh, marahil isa kayo sa gumawa ng resolution ng January 1, gaya ng this year, uh, maglus ako ng timbang. Kakain ako ng uh, mga healthy foods, mag-exercise ako regularly, I'll read more, I'll get more organized, I will learn a new skill, marami pang iba. Lahat ng mga ito ay magagandang intentions, pero pagkatapos ng ilang mga araw at linggong nakalipas, the novelty wears off. And uh, naging distracted na ang isip. Na lesson na ang motivation at wala na nangyari sa New Year's resolution. As the old saying goes, old habits die hard. It is easy to make resolutions, but it is much harder to keep them. Well, it is with these things in mind uh, that we come to Philippians chapter 1. And I would like to prove to you this morning that the resolutions of a true believer are of a different character and a different nature to the ones that are made by the unbelieving world. When you look at the way that the Christian resolves to live his life, it is totally different to the way that the world believes. Ang resolution ng isang Kristiyano ay hindi bunga ng kanyang pangsariling nais o kagustuhan kundi ito ay nakabatay sa kanyang kilos at pag-uugali ayon sa marangal na Ebanghelyo ni Kristo. Ang tunay na layunin ng isang Kristiyano ay leso sa kanyang pansarili at mas nakakarami ang nakafocus sa kanyang tagapagligtas. He must increase, but I must decrease. Ito dapat ang supreme passion, ang masiding layunin at ultimate desire at resolution ng isang tunay na alagad ni Kristo. At nais ko kayong hamunin ngayong umaga, ito rin pa ang iyong Kristiyanong hangarin. Alam naman ninyo na ang aking sermon series ay nasa aklat ni Pablo sa Filipos ay verse by verse ating itong tinatalakay. At ngayong umaga ay nasa huling mga talata ng unang kabanata, ang mga verses 27 to 30 na ang pinamagatang a life worth living. And I would like to say that there is no life that is worth living like the Christian life. Muling nating alalahanin na si Pablo ay 
uh, nakakakulong at may posibilidad na siya ay hindi na makalaya at hatulan dahil sa pangangaral ng Ebanghelyo ni Kristo. At imbis na siya ay malungkot at mag-self-pity, siya pa mismo ang nagpapalakas ng loob ng mga kapatiran sa Filipos. He is magnifying the name of Jesus Christ and he himself is advocating for the joy of believers. That is his priority. It is a selfless objective, is it not? Magnifying Christ and advocating joy in believers. May isang nagsabi na ang formula ng joy ay ang acronym ito. J ay for Jesus, ang O ay for others, at ang Y ay for you. Upang lubos daw tayong maging masaya, si Jesus ang dapat una, others ang ibang tao ang pangalawa, at ikaw ang you ang pinakahuli. Kung titinang natin parang ganito ang order ng buhay at ang laman ng sulat ni Pablo. His life is totally irrelevant. You can chain him up, you can beat his body, you can strip him of every earthly possession. But he will rejoice and he will continue to rejoice as we've seen because his joy does not depend upon his circumstances. He is not a joyful man because everything in his life has gone well. Quite the opposite. He is joyful because he's depending upon the Lord's. And as we come to verse 27 this morning, notice that Paul, he stops talking about his own resolution and he turns the spotlight onto the church. This is no longer the personal language of verse 21. Para sa akin, for to me, to live is Christ. Now, now in verse 27, he flips the focus onto the church at Philippi. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel. This is how I will live my life for Christ. But what about you? Let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. As we've seen already so clearly through our series through this letter, uh, a major emphasis of Philippians is on the gospel. The gospel is front and center to everything that Paul wants to say. It's not so much about the content of the gospel like we see in the book of Romans. It's not really a defense of the gospel like we see in the letter to the Galatians. But here in Philippians, we see the implications of the gospel. That's what this, ver this whole book is all about, the implications of the gospel. How does the gospel not only take root in your life, but how does it evidence itself in your life? And the epistle to the Philippians is basically challenging you and me. If we have come to believe in the gospel, what effect is that having on our day-to-day -day life. How is that changing not only the way that we believe but also the way that we behave? Sa mga talata rito sa verse 27 ay ating makikita na china challenge ni Pablo ang iglesia na ang kanilang paniniwala sa Panginoon at sa Ebanghelyo ay dapat na ipapamuhay na karapat dapat bilang isang Kristiyano. Having come to believe in God's good news. Now we must talk about the implications of that message. Ang verse 27 ay nasa anyo ng pautos imperative or command. Sa katunayan, ang lahat ng mga utos o commands na ating mababasa sa kabanata dalawa hanggang ikaapat ay magmamula sa pautos ating makikita dito so verse 27. Verse 27 is really an introduction to the rest of the letter. We've seen Paul's heart. We've seen his pastoral concern. We've seen his great desire for his own life. But now there's a change in direction. And he wants to talk to the church about their responsibility, their roles 
as believers in Jesus Christ. And so let us remember this as we continue through this series together, that all of the imperatives, all of the commands that will follow from this verse are really an exposition of this overarching imperative. Let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. And so let's break these verses into three points. Ating talakayin ng mga talatang ito sa tatlong bahagi. Una ay sa verse 27. Ang inyo lamang pamumuhay ay maging karapat dapat sa Ebanghelyo ni Kristo na kahit ako ay dumating at kayo'y makita o wala man sa harap ninyo at mabili, uh, mabalitaan ko ang mga bagay patungkol sa inyo na kayong naninindigan sa isang Espiritu. Ang unang bahagi ay stand firmly in one spirit. Stand firmly in one spirit. <clears throat> uh, ang award-winning na penikula na Saving Private Ryan, ito ay kwento patungkol sa apat na makakapatid sa, uh, na, tes, na, na, na testino sa World War II. Ang tatlo sa makakapatid ay namatay sa labanan at ang isa ay nakaligtas. And so sa decision ng isang kap- kapitan na si Captain Miller na kanilang hahanapin itong si Private Ryan at iuuwi nila ito sa kanyang mga magulang. Sa penikulang ito ay nagbuwis ng buhay ang mga sundalo ni Captain Miller at maging ang kanyang sariling buhay na ginawa niya panangga ang kanyang sariling katawan para lang mabuhay si Private Ryan. Sorry to give you spoilers if you're planning to watch the movie. But fast forward to the end of the movie. Si Private Ryan ang isang matandang lalaki. At bumisita sa cemeteryo ng France sa puntot ni Captain Miller. At labis ang kanyang pagtangin at nakaluhod sa pasasalamat. Ang kanyang, ang, ang kanyang asawa ay naroon upang bigyan siya ng suporta at paulit-ulit na sinasabi ni Private Ryan sa kanyang asawa, Tell me, I've lived a good life. Tell me, I've been a good man. Magmula matapos ang digmaan ay araw-araw ay conscious siya na dapat siya ay mabuhay ng may pakinabang upang hindi masayang ang sacrifice na ibinigay ni Captain Miller, Miller para lang siya ay mabuhay. At mga kapatid, ganito rin ang nais ipah- uh, ipahiwatig ni Pablo sa mga kapatiran sa Filipos. Sa liwanag ng ginawa ni Jesus sa sakripisyo ng kamatayan ni Jesus sa cross upang ang mga mananampalataya, tayong mga tinubos ng kanyang dugo sa cross ay marapat lang na tayo ay dapat mabuhay sa araw-araw na may kabuluhan. And notice the words at the beginning of verse 27. The word in my version says, only. Or in the NIV, it says, whatever happens. Another translation says, just one thing. Ang punto lagi ni Pablo ay hindi kailangan ng mahabang listahan ng mga utos at regulation. Bagkus tanging isa lang ang maliwanag na utos. Ay ito ay ang mamuhay ng naayon sa katawag sa ating ng Ebanghelyo ni Kristo sa ating mga pag-iisip, sa mga pananalita at sa ating mga kilos, tayo ba'y lumalakad ayon sa kabanalan at para sa kalulwalhatian ni Kristo. Kaya na ang hamon sa ating ngayong umaga, nag-reflect ba sa ating mga buhay ang mga Kristiyanong pag-uugali? Mayroong bang consistency ang ating mga doktrina sa ating mga buhay? Do we have not just the principles of God's word in our mind, but do we show the practice of God's spirit in our lives? Because according to the Apostle Paul, just as the truth of the gospel 
must have worked in his mind. So the transformation of the gospel must be displayed in his life. And so he wants for the church at Philippi and by extension the church here in TNC. You might remember if you cast your mind back, I can't remember how many months ago, we were looking at the context of the opening two verses of the letter to the Philippians. And one of the things I mentioned was that Philippi was a Roman colony. That means he big sabi in every single Roman sit every single Philippian citizen had the privileges, the rights of being a Roman citizen, though they were miles away from Rome. And so Dito Paul he is writing to the church, which is based at, at the heart of a, a rich Roman colony, but he wants to remind them of a gospel reality which is that while they may have many privileges in being a citizen of Rome, actually they must never forget that their spiritual citizenship is in heaven. They belong to a greater kingdom. They are Christians before they are Roman. And I wonder if you have the same mindset. Uh, you've got a phrase, proud to be Pinoy. That's a great thing, isn't it? Proud to be Pinoy. But are you, first of all, before all else, proud to be a Christian believer, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ? That is the priority, isn't it? Above nationalism, above patriotism, we are to be people who pride ourselves in being sons and daughters of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so our priority is not first and foremost to the government. And the priority of the people of Philippi was not first and foremost for Caesar, but it was for Christ. The purpose of their existence was not for the good of the empire, but for the good of the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And one of the ways to have that priority, one of the ways to walk worthy of the gospel is to stand firm, to stand firm in one spirit. The proof that you are truly a believer is that you are not wavering freely, but that you are standing firmly. Kung kayo makaraon ng pagkakataon na pumisita sa aming bansa, ang isa sa mga magandang puntahan ay ang London Guards na nakatayo ng ilang oras sa harapan ng Buckingham Palace na kung saan nakatira ang Haring Charles. And it does look like a very easy job. Their role is simply just to stand to attention. Araw, araw, whatever the weather, they just stand to attention. But you know that a London guard actually has to be on duty for up to 48 hours with minimal breaks. Ito ay hindi madaling trabaho na duty sila ng 48 hours na may um, uh, ma ma break lamang, maraming distraction mula sa kalye, mga tao, mga turista, nagpapapicture. Subalit sila ay nakastand firm kahit anong mangyari. And the stance of the soldier is to be the stance of the believer. There are many temptations around us. There are many distractions in the world at large. But we must never abandon our post. We must stand firm in one spirit. Sa larangan ng buhay kristyano, maraming mga so-called Christians ngayon ay hindi na sumusunod sa mga utos ng salita ng Diyos. Sila ay nag-relax na sa mga kristyanong gawain. Hindi na nila tunay na pinaghahawakan ang Biblia bilang otoridad ng kanilang buhay at pamumuhay. They're swept along the tide of modern thinking. They are just chasing after the world. And mga kaibigan, kay daling matangay ng mundong ito kesa patuloy kang maninindigan sa tama at sa katotohanan. Mas mabilis ang pagtalikod kesa matiyagang pagpapatuloy. Alalahanin natin na sa bilangguan at hindi sa pulpito si Pablo habang sinusulutan niya ang mga kapatiran sa Filipos. 
He's not looking around the congregation like I'm looking at you today. He doesn't have that privilege. And so he says this, Kahit ako ay dumating at kayo makita, o wala man sa harap ninyo at mabalitaan ko ang mga bagay patungkol sa inyo na kayo naninindigan sa isang espiritu. This goes back to the point about consistency in our Christian walk. Paul is effectively saying, I don't want you just to say the right things when I'm in the room with you. Standing firm in one spirit is not just something that you do when everybody's watching. Noah, whether I'm here or whether I'm there, I want you to live a life that is worthy of the gospel. I want you to remember your duty as a Christian believer, whether there's CCTV cameras on you or whether you're all alone by yourself. Maybe you've heard of the phrase, keeping up the appearances. Have you heard that phrase, keeping up the appearances? Sa madaling salita, kapag tayo mayroon mga bisita sa ating mga tahanan, napakaayos, marahan, magalang ang ating lahat ng na, na mga pananalita at kilos. Subalit kapag sila ay nakaalis na at walang ibang tao, tayo ay nag-iiba ng anyo at ugali. It's why D.L. Moody, one of the great preachers of the past, once said this, a man ought to live so that everybody knows he is a Christian, most especially his family. And that is the implication of these words in verse 27. We are to live consistently, not living in the fear of Paul, but living in the fear of God. You see, God is omniscient, God is omnibenevolent, and all the other omnis, but one of the ones that we most take note of here is that God is omnipresent. As the psalmist says, where can I flee from your spirits? Where can I run from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. That should be all the accountability that we need in our Christian lives. Palayo na ng palayo ang kasalukuyan mundo at lipunan sa turo ng Biblia at Ebanghelyo. Ikaw ay sasama sa mga ito o isa ka sa mga maninindigan at tatatayo, sorry, tatayong lalab, uh, lalaban sa changing moral tide, tide ng ating henerasyon. Huwag tayong mabulag-bulagan ang mga influensya sa na, ng Western world gaya ng atheism at agnosticism at apathy ay dahan-dahan ng papunta sa mga Eastern countries gaya ng Philippines. It's coming over here. And we must never ever be smug in ourselves to say, well, at least we're not like them in the West because it's coming thick and fast. The morality, even here in the Philippines, is changing fast. And so all the more, we as a church, as members in TNC, we're to stand firm in one spirit. Kailangan nating maging maalam sa Biblia. Mapanala, uh, uh, mapanala, oh, sorry. Mapanalanginin at maging committed sa iglesia. Bible, prayer, and church membership. We must prioritize these things so that we might stand firm in one spirit. And so all of that is very passive, isn't it? We must stand firm. But look down at verse 27, because there is also something active that Paul makes mention of. In order to live a life that is worthy of the gospel, you're also to do this. Look at verse 27 at the end there. Oh, I've lost my place. It's up in sa Tagalog na lang, na may isang isipan na makakasamang nagsisikap para sa pananampalataya ng Ebanghelyo at sa anuman ay huwag kayong matakot sa inyong mga kaaway. So ikalawa, tayo ay tinatawag na strive fearlessly as one body. Stand firm in one spirit, but also strive fearlessly 
as one body. Dito sa inyong bansa ay isang basketball country, di ba? Kahit sanda ko ay may basketball court. Personally, wala akong masyadong alam tungkol sa NBA o PBA sapagkat football ang sports namin. But what I have learned is that what makes a football team success, successful is not that they have a Lionel Messi or a Cristiano Ronaldo ang mga sikat at kilalang celebrity football players. What makes a team successful is when you have 11 players on the field and they all work together. They pass the ball, they communicate within, with one another, they play their positions well, they work as a team side by side. The reason Argentina won the World Cup is not just because Lionel Messi was there, but because they had 11 men working together as one team. And so when it comes to sport, teamwork wins victories. But I want to argue that ganito rin ang, ang sa ating talata. Ang isang Kristiyano ay hindi nag-iisa o loner. Bagkos tayo ay pinapayuhan na maging kabahagi ng isang kuminidad ng mga mananampalataya. For just one purpose, we are to strive fearlessly side by side. We're all in it together. And so I want to ask you, ikaw ba'y nagpapasalamat sa Diyos at naging kabilang ka sa isang biblically ordered church na kung saan hindi lang nakakapakinig at natututo ng salita ng Diyos at may magandang fellowship sa mga kapatiran. Hindi mo kailangan mag-isa sa pakikipaglaban sa makasalanang mundo, sa pita ng laman at sa Diablo. Ang iglesia ay isang kuminidad para maging kasama mo sa inyong espiritual ng paglago at pakiki, uh, paglaban. Ang mga kapatid, hindi ka magtatagumpay, mag-isa sa iyong kristyanong paglaban. Hindi mo kakayanin mag-isa ang Christian warfare. Madali kang magagapi at matatalo ng kaaway ang Diablo. Kailangan mo ng isang hukpo, isang army na mga kakampe. Kailangan mo ang mga kapatiran ng iglesia. There's no way that you can win the fight by yourself. Kung papaano sa sports team ng football o basketball na kailangan ng kakampe, the same is true in your Christian life. Sometimes you hear people using this phrase, they say, when it comes to my faith, it is my personal relationship with Jesus. Have you ever heard that? Or have you ever said that? This is my personal relationship. I try my best to avoid using that phrase. Not least because there is absolutely no reference to my personal relationship in the Bible. Now, some people use that phrase very innocently. And what they mean to say is, I have a personal relationship with Jesus as opposed to an observational knowledge about Jesus. And that's okay. I understand what they mean. But I fear that there are more who throw that phrase out in the world today to justify their own detachment and lack of accountability to a wider body of believers. A lot of people say it's my personal relationship with God and therefore you have no right to tell me what I should do and what church I should, I should attend and how I should live my Christian life. Ang iba kasi ang kanilang pananaw, ang kanilang personal na relationship kay Jesus ay hindi na nangangailangan ng spiritual na community, hindi na kailangan ng local church. Hindi ko kailangan ng fellowship mula sa mga kapatid o sa pastoral oversight or counseling ng pastor. I don't need anything apart from me and Jesus. That's what they say. But they're forgetting that Jesus was the originator. Jesus was the mastermind behind the local church. The local church was not started by some Christians in the first century. 
who decided that they should come together as some social club, but the church was designed by Jesus himself. Just look at Matthew 16. Jesus is there with his disciples and he says, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And so I want to warn you this morning, don't ever try to argue a case for living the Christian life all by yourself. Mga kaibigan at mga kapatid, maliwanag ang mensahe ni Pablo. Kailangan mo naging, maging committed sa isang Bible-believing, gospel-preaching, Christ-exalting church, kaya ng TNC. You need to be committed to a church. It's, it's not an option. It's a command. Isang utos. Isang imperative. But notice there's more to this verse. Because we're, stri- we're to strive together, not with a divided mind, but with one mind. And so it's really good to gather weekly with your fellow church members, but there also must be unity. It is no good saying, well, I go to church, but you're a divisive person and you love to sow disunity amongst the brethren. Mark chapter 3 verse 25 says, A house that is divided against itself cannot stand. And the church that Paul is writing to, as we've seen already, they are exemplary. They're a great church to follow. The church at Philippi is a church that I would love to be a member in. There, There was so much joy there. There was so much support. They loved Paul, their church planter, they, they, they submitted to the authority that was given to them in elders and deacons. But listen to this. Hindi ito isang perfectong iglesia. May mga problema din sila na patatalakay ni Pablo sa susunod na kabanata. Sabi ni Spurgeon, If you wait for a perfect church, you must wait until you get to heaven. Kahit ang iglesia ng Filipos ay mga problema at issues pagdating sa usapin ng unity. Subalit, hindi ito dapat excuses para hindi magpabil, uh, magpabilang, maging kaanib ng isang local church. Paul, he, he is so clear here, isn't he? He's so obvious in what he's saying. You need to be standing side by side and striving towards the same goal. You will have no success in the church of Christ if you pull in different directions. You've got to go at the same pace, with the same motivation, with the same perspective that Jesus Christ is the head of this church and my duty is to follow him. But then look at verse 28. I think the implication here is Paul is almost giving them some kind of prophetic insight that difficult days are coming. Enemies are encamped around. Persecution looms overhead. And you know, don't you, that to face any kind of problem by yourself is a terrifying thing. But he's saying here that if we're striving side by side, if we're faithful, committed members of a local church, then we can be fearless in the face of difficulty because we have Christ and his church working with us. Elsewhere, Paul reminded the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 12, he said, God arranged the members in the body. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. Nice kung i-apply ang mga talatang ito sa ating iglesia, ang TNC. Dito sa ating kalig, kalig, uh, kaligitnaan, tayo ay binubuo ng iba't ibang uri ng membership. May mga adult, mga young professionals, men and women, mga may kalaob sa pangunguna sa pananambahan, mga technology, technologically able, mga tagapagluto at tagapaghanda sa ating mga fellowship meal at ipapah. 
isang katawan pero binubuo ng mga marami at makakaibang bahagi. One body, many members, and I thank God that we belong to a church where not everybody is like me. Trust me, I'm so glad to be in a church where there is a variety of different character traits, a variety of different giftings. It's a great privilege that we are not clones, but we need each other. We come together for one single purpose. <clears throat> And as we were reminded firstly, to stand firm, immovably in one spirit, so that we do not give in to the modern philosophies and the liberal ideologies that are surrounding us, equally important, Paul says, is the matter of striving fearlessly for the faith of the gospel by preaching Christ and Him crucified. Ang kalakasan ng isang iglesia ay hindi lamang sa kung ano ang pinaniniwalaan, kundi kung papaano ang iglesia ay kumikilos at namumuhay sa katotahanan na iyon. But there is more in these verses that I would like to give our attention to. Look lastly at verses 29 to 30. 29 to 30. We've heard the commands, stand firm in one spirit, strive fearlessly as one body, but ang pangatlo, I suffer faithfully with one perspective. Suffer faithfully with one perspective. The verse says this, verse 29 to 30. Sabagat sa inyo'y ipinagkalaob alang-alang kay Kristo, hindi lamang ang manampalataya sa Kanya kundi ang magtiis din naman alang-alang sa Kanya. Yamang taglay ninyo ang kayong ding pakikipaglaban na inyong nakita sa akin at ngayoy nababalitaan ninyo tungkol sa akin. Ikaw na matagal ka ng Kristiyano, uh, alam mo na tunay na hindi madali ang magpaka-Kristiyano sa lahat ng oras at lahat ng panahon. Tayo ay mga tunay na alagad ni Jesus ay my price to pay. Jesus himself said, if any man follows me, he must take up his cross and follow after me. It's a difficult road. Ang buhay kristyano ay mahirap ng buhay. It's, it's a hard life. It's a difficult life. It's full of trials and temptations and snares. The devil is against us. The world is not for us. The flesh works against our own selves. We, we are fighting a battle day by day. And if you want to stand firm for the truth of the gospel, if you want to strive for the faith of the gospel, then inevitably, we see this lastly, you will suffer for the gospel. Strive, stand, but also suffer. <clears throat> Isang church father na his uh, pangalan niya, Polycarp. His name was Polycarp. Ilang dekada ang nakalipas mula isulat ni Pablo ang liham na ito sa mga taga-Filipos. Kagaya ni Pablo, si Polycarp ay inaresto at ikinulong dahil sa kanyang faith. Kinabukasan siya ay inaha, uh, inaharap sa isang malaking arena kasama ang mga leon at pagkatapos ay sunungin. Sus, susunung, oh, susunugin pala. Susunugin. Sa huling pagkakataon, siya ay tinanong kung kanyang ikakatawa ang... Uh, sorry, ik, <laughs> ikakatawa ang Panginoong Heso Kristo at muling magiging tapat kay Haring Caesar. Siya ay tumingin sa mga tao at nawika ng 86 years na akong naglilingkod kay Jesus at sa kailanman ay hindi niya ako ginawan ng masama. Papaano kong lalapastanganin ang aking Diyos at Hare na nagpatawad sa aking mga sala at nagligtas ng aking kaluluwa. I don't know what kind of persecution and difficulties and sufferings you will face for the cause 
of the gospel. I can't imagine, but I don't know, if any of you will ever be fed to lions. I can't imagine, and I hope not, that none of you will be burnt at the stake for your faith. But the same conviction of Polycarp and Paul ought to be in us as the church of Christ. Notice verse 29 is phrased like this. Sa inyo'y ipinakalaob alang-alang kay Kristo. Hindi lamang ang manampalataya sa Kanya, kundi ang magtiis din naman alang-alang sa Kanya. Ibig sabihin, God grants saving faith, doesn't He? Salvation belongs to the Lord. There is no one here as a true believer who can truly claim that they have been saved 99% Jesus and 1% them. It is all of Christ. It is a gift of God. But it's not only our own salvation that is given by God, but also our suffering is given by God. If you had to choose between the two, what would you choose? Of course, you want the salvation, but who wants suffering? None of us by nature. And yet our text tells us that God grants them both. They are twin gifts. You can't have salvation without suffering. This is a package deal. Sa ikalawang Timoteo 3.12, nagwika si Pablo, tunay na ang lahat ng ibig mabuhay na may kabanalan kay Kristo Jesus ay daranas ng pag-uusik. Or 1 Peter 4.12, do not be surprised as though a strange ordeal has come upon you when you suffer for the gospel. The Bible could not be clearer, could it? Upon this relation between suffering and salvation, they come together. In fact, Jesus told his disciples before he ascended into heaven, go into all nations to Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And what did the disciples do? They obeyed the command. And what happened to them? Acts chapter 8, Stephen is martyred. He's stoned to death. And on that day, it says, a great persecution began against the church. Where? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all across the earth. Do you see that? The command was to go, the disciples went, and what happened when they got there? They suffered for their faith. Mga kaibigan at mga kapatid, kabahagi sa pagpapahayag ng Ebanghelyo ni Kristo ay ang pag-uusik. Ito ay kabahagi ng ating pagiging kaisa at kaugnayan kay, He- kay Kristo. When we are faithful to strive to spread the gospel, we can guarantee that we will suffer for the gospel. Do you see when we say come and be a Christian, come and be a follower of Jesus, it is not for the faint of hearts. Paul himself, he knows it from raw experience and the church at Philippi, they know it. That's why he says this, Taklay ninyo ang gayon ding pakikipaglaban na inyong nakita sa akin at ngayoy Nababalitaan ninyo tungkol sa akin. Sa mga gawa 16, si matapos mangaraw si Pablo sa tabing ilog na kung saan naligtas ang babaeng si Lydia, sa mga sumu- uh, sumunod ng takpo ay inaresto at ikinulang si Pablo at ang kanyang mga kasamahan. And for us today, we know all of these happened. Why? How do you know that those things took place? Because you read it in your Bible, didn't you? You heard it from Acts 16. But the Philippians, they knew these things happened, not because they'd read it in the book of Acts, but because they'd seen it with their eyes. They'd been right there witnessing the the persecutions that Paul was facing for the cause of the gospel. They'd been a front row seat watcher of all of these sufferings that Paul was enduring for the faith of the gospel. But I want to ask you this morning, how about you? Forget Paul for a second. How about you? Are you living a life that is worthy of the cause of the gospel? Are you standing firm? Are you striving fearless 
Are you suffering faithfully? I mentioned, didn't I, that we are to suffer faithfully with one perspective. What is that perspective? Well, it is to see the bigger picture. You look at Jesus who suffered in ways far beyond anything that we will ever endure for the joy that was set before him. What was the joy? Not only his glorification, but also the salvation of his elect. Well, you look at Paul and you look at many other heroes of the faith in history. They suffered in order that people might hear the gospel so that churches might be planted and so that a congregation like the church of Philippi might be built up in the faith. Ang katunungin na nais kong iwan sa inyo tayo bang mga mananampalatay ng Panginoong Heso Kristo sa kabulungan ito ng TNC ay nakahandang mausik nag-suffer faithfully alang-alang sa Ebanghelyo ni Kristo. Are you willing to go through that? Will you complain or will you rejoice that for the sake of Christ, not for the sake of your name, but for the sake of Christ and for the extension of his kingdom, you might suffer. What a privilege it is to suffer for Jesus. Blessed are those who are persecuted. For there shall be the kingdom of God. Jesus is so clear, isn't he? If you want to be a follower of me, then you must suffer. And friends, the joy that we get in the gospel is never divorced from the reality of life. God knows that to suffer for the gospel must be front and center in our proclamation of the gospel. Because the Bible, it doesn't deny the hardships of life. Our text could not be clearer. And so what will you do with these verses? What will you do with Philippians chapter 1 verses 27 to 30? Will you live a life that is worthy of the gospel? Will you stand firmly? Will you strive fearlessly? Will you suffer faithfully all for the cause of Jesus Christ and his great name? Well, it is my prayer that this would be not just a New Year's resolution, something that is made to be broken, but a true Christian resolution for the rest of your life until eternity. We will live a life that is worthy of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> Great God and Heavenly Father, you have spoken through your word to us this morning. You have made our duty so clear. We are to live a life that does not bring praise and glory to our own names, but we are to live a life that is worthy of the gospel. Oh Lord, when we think of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, Lord, ought we not to sacrifice our lives for him? Oh Lord, there is nothing that we can do that will ever give you enough thanks and praise for what you did in sending Jesus to us. But Lord, we pray that we would do our parts, that we would be faithful, that we would stand firm, that we would strive fearless, that we would suffer faithfully, and that you might get the praise in TNC and all over the globe. We pray this in the precious name of Christ. Amen.